Hello, I'm Michael Parker and welcome to Antidote. This week, the whole globe is abuzz with the story of the Panama Papers, the two and a half terabytes of data that has been leaked from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca. I'm very pleased to have back on the show to talk to me about this, a man who is, I get a lot of comments from people wherever I go, man, when is he coming back? It is John McAfee. He is a cybersecurity expert. He is a 2016 presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. John, welcome back to Antidote. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So I'm going to jump in because you're giving us a little bit of time. So I want to make this quick. You put out this uh, paper this week on the Business Insider talking about the Panama Papers and the impact that that has for the cybersecurity and the law industries. But what I want to ask you, and this is what's really on my mind, because people immediately started contacting me about this to see what I thought. John, who do you think leaked this and why would they leak it? Well, I always look to see who had the most to gain. Um, and if you look at what was leaked, um, which is uh, enemies of the U.S. government, not, just, not necessarily enemies of, of myself or, or you, but enemies of the government, um, not one single American citizen was in this leak, even though I have seen, and by the way, the, the uh, Masak uh, uh, Mas uh, Fonseca has been hacked three times since 2013. On the dark web, there's just all, all kinds of information. Uh, much of this never hits the light because the hackers use the information to uh, either blackmail or, or uh, steal credit card information or billing information or bank information and, and to enrich themselves. And law firms, the, the clients of law firms are, are obvious targets of this because especially something like uh, Masak Fonseca, which is an offshore banking law firm. I mean, it costs you $100,000 to set up uh, one of these accounts. Uh, so obviously the clients are wealthy. Uh, but who has the most to gain from, from the leak itself? Not from the hack, but from the leak. Um, it's the U.S. government. Uh, think about it. Uh, OCCPR, which is uh, a, an organization funded by USAID, um, uh, is in charge of uh, I see uh, the, the International uh, uh, Committee of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ, yes. yeah. uh, that, that is part of OCCPR. Um, I, I believe it was, it was uh, the CIA or the, the NSA or one of our other 14 covert agencies within this government, um, simply because nothing about American citizens was leaked. And, and if, you, if you think about what this implies, it's sending a message. It's saying, first of all, we're smearing our enemies. Secondly, if you are a client of uh, Masak uh, uh, Fonseca, then we know who you are as American citizens. And if we knock on your door and say we need a favor or for you to do something or not do something, uh, you know, you'd better pay attention. I mean, I'm sorry to be so cynical. I am. Uh, I love America, but I think our government has gone insane. John, I agree with you 100 percent. And that's exactly what I thought, because when I first read this, like I said, I started getting emails and texts from friends and buddies who know that I'm interested in this. And the, what I told them at the time was, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. And in the couple of days afterwards, really, to me, the idea that the rich and powerful would need to put their money into offshore accounts, that's no surprise. Why would anybody be surprised by that? What's more interesting is who stands to gain by leaking this information? Because whoever this was asked for no economic remuneration. They just said, listen, I want the truth out. Now here's the deal. Yes, maybe it's some white hat hacker, maybe it's some person who wants to tell the truth, but I don't know, I, I don't really feel that's the case. Well, I think the white hat hackers and the black hat hackers have a great deal of information about the U.S. government, which which would be very harmful. Yes, it would be foolish to release such because the wrath of our government is is awesome, uh, as anyone like myself who has experienced it. Um, so, so yeah, I, I do believe it's the, it's the U.S. government, and I believe there are going to be further uh, leaks that come out as time goes by. But keep in mind uh, of. Uh, Masak Fonseca is only the fourth largest in the world. There's a, the, a larger one in Hong Kong, the, the world's largest, four times as large as um, Masak Fonseca. Uh, and, and I believe we're going to find uh, things coming out from these other law firms as well. Law firms are, by the way, the, the easiest thing in the world to hack. The easiest thing in the world. Uh, some of the larger, like Kreindler and Kreindler, have been, have been hacked seven times. All the data of all of their clients is on the dark web. Uh, and anyone uh, who can access the dark web and who has the, the right uh, passwords, the keys, the uh, knock on the door, I'm who I am, uh, can access this. 
So um, I believe that there's going to be more like uh, of, uh, releases of information that's coming down the pike. But, but you have to ask yourself why. Because we know for a fact that America is, is the largest um, customer uh, for these, uh, these offshore accounts mm-hmm. uh, because of our tax structure and because of uh, the, um, the way our, our IRS goes after people. Uh, we are the largest customer, not one, not one name, not one individual, not one movie star, not one sports figure. Uh, not one politician was leaked. John, this you're, is if anybody but us are the bad people. You're right. And you know what? Anybody that's not American is asking the question that you and I are asking right now, which is why are there no Americans on that list? And I think you're right. One of the very first things that I saw on the web about this was something that was put out by the ICIJ, which is this international consortium of investigative journalists, which frankly I'd never heard of until earlier this week. And it was a, and it was a graphic film, a graphic video, like three minutes long, which be- purported to say that, listen, all this money that's going to fund the Syrian um, war must much of it is coming from the, these types of offshore accounts. That may or may not be the case, but to me, that showed a clear bias off the off, right off the bat. Like, okay, there's an agenda here. Oh, absolutely, and I, I think the agenda had some <clears throat> un, unwarranted um, uh, casualties. I mean, the, the the prime minister of Iceland, that, that poor guy. Yes, I, mean, I agree. You no, know, if he did anything at all, I mean, it's perfectly legal to have an offshore account. I That's mean, right. I had. One. All of my after-tax income went into offshore accounts. Why? I don't trust our American banking system. I'm sorry. <laughs> I agree. So there's nothing illegal in not trusting the American banking system and putting all of your after-tax income into an offshore account. Uh, and I, I claimed all of this stuff, and it was, it was you know, nothing, nothing underhanded, uh, nothing sneaky. Just I'd rather have my money somewhere else. I'm sorry. I agree. Um, one, of the, one of the other things that's interesting about that Icelandic uh, prime minister is that's one of the few countries in which their government actually really went after, went after the banksters, and now the table is turned. Well, I mean, maybe because they went after the banksters. That's let's right. Get, let's get real. Um, that might be why it's one of the only non-enemies of America. If you took, if you if you define enemies as someone trying to kill us, okay. Yeah. Uh, that one, one of the only non-enemies of America that was that was smeared. So you, you have to then understand that if this was by our U.S. government, then there's something behind our U.S. government, which is controlling things in a, a very sinister manner. Now, that scares me. I, I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, I, I'm 70. I, I do not scare easy. You must believe me. But it's frightening. And, and it's frightening because I, I have children and grandchildren. And the things that are happening here, which we're allowing to happen without speaking out, without standing up, without marching in the streets, we're allowing this. When we allow our privacies to be invaded, when we allow our liberties to be taken, they're also taken from our children and grandchildren and on down the line. John, we, is the, isn't this the end of privacy? Isn't privacy damn near over? I'm sorry? Isn't privacy damn near over? Certainly for me it is. I mean, it's impossible for me not to buy a new cell phone and not get hacked by somebody. Usually it's, a, it's an agency of our government yeah. within 24 hours. I just let it happen now. If I want secure communications, I use a dumb phone with special hardware. All right. So that so that I can still have some tiny amount of privacy left for the rest of it. I know that even if you turn your phone off, if it's been hacked through a stingray, which the FBI and every agency in our government has, then even if you turn it off, it pretends to turn off and it looks like it's off. But I, I want to ask you something. Everybody at home, why don't you wake up in the middle of the night, put your hand on the phone that's turned off and ask and see, is it warm? You would be <laughs> shocked at how many of us have been hacked by our government and they are watching us. They're listening to us. I just take the battery out of mine now. I mean, I, I know I'm being watched. I just take the battery out when I want some privacy. John, the last, well, the last time you you were on here, we were talking about the whole uh, Apple FBI thing. And I asked you if this wasn't really just about setting a precedent. And you said what I think was clear to any of us who were really thinking. It's like, listen, they had the ability to hack that thing all along. It was never about that. Never. And, and honestly, it doesn't take a cybersecurity expert to know this. I, I knew they had a contract with, with Celebrite. That, that dated back to 2013, to 2013, when I went on the air and, and started complaining. But think about it. If our FBI, our, our greatest agency of intelligence gathering on this continent, is incapable 
of unlocking an iPhone when I can do it and 10,000 other people can do it, then we are in deep shit. Excuse my language. We're in deep trouble. Yep. We are. And, and this is something we have to start understanding. Let's use our common sense, please. The FBI goes, I can't unlock an iPhone. I mean, I know that everybody who goes to DEF CON who can do it. Uh, everybody who goes to Hack Miami can do it. Mm -hmm. All these hackers can do it. But we, the FBI, can't. Therefore, give us a master key. And they happened to choose a telephone that was used in a terrorist act. Yeah. So we're supposed to be afraid now. Oh, my God. If they don't get access to that phone, terrorists are going to come in and destroy us all. I mean, it is so outrageous, insane, and unbelievable. And yet so many of us, so many of us bought that argument. Please, we have to use some common sense in this country. We are known for common sense. I don't think anybody in Missouri believed it. No. And, and, and John, let me ask you this, because I, I know you only have a little bit of time. But getting back to this banking thing, one of the other things that concerns me is that I would even put forth the possibility that what if this, this leak occurred so that people would put their money into other offshore banks, which are now within the United States, like in Reno or in uh, South Dakota or Wyoming, because there, I have an article on my desk right now, 2016 January Bloomberg article saying exactly that. So now we're going to have offshore accounts within the U.S. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's like it's, it's a win, win, win for the government and a lose, lose, lose for the citizens. It's a win because we get to smear our enemies. And we get to exaggerate that smear. If you think about it, I mean, if we are controlling the release of the information, we can control the content of that information. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because nobody else can get access to it unless you're on the dark web and, and you know people. You can't get access to anything. And so you have to believe what the ICIJ is telling you. And keep in mind, it was the Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, Germany, that first got this information. Well, it is well known that the Süddeutsche Zeitung is filled with CIA people. This is a, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a conspiracist here. I mean, I'm 70 years old, I've been around. I lived in Munich for two years. I know the facts of life. So the CIA has infiltrated the Süddeutsche Zeitung to a high degree. And so they can actually manufacture information now because they're all going, no, we're not gonna release it because we don't wanna harm innocent people. Well, what the hell is that? What is, in, what is innocent, first of all? Uh, clearly all us Americans are innocent except the ones who are going to get a knock on their door someday soon and go, look, we were the CIA. We know what you did. We saw what you did. John, Therefore, I, I don't think you're a conspiracy theorist at all. I mean, listen, the Operation Mockingbird or whatever it was, I mean, these are real things. Yes, the CIA put people into journalists and broadcasting companies, and they're still there. This is this is beyond the realm of conspiracy theory. So yes, I mean, when, when we talk about this ICIJ, which, you know, maybe I'm just clueless, but I've never heard of until this week. And International Consortium, right off the bat, that, sends a, <laughs> that title sends up red flags to me. Well, of course. I mean, please, we, we have to get back to a, a, a position of common sense, rationality, and calm reasoning in this country. I mean, we were founded on reason, for heaven's sake. Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, give me a break, people. These people thought things through. We don't do that anymore. Someone bombs the World Trade Center or some airplanes fly into it and they go, oh my God, unless you give up your liberty and a certain degree of your privacy, we can't protect you. But we want to protect you and we know you want to be protected. We buy that. We buy into it lock, stock, and barrel. Stop. Stop. Look where it is that has brought us to this point of madness, where our government, which is, is supposed to be a servant, is now our mother and our father and our boss. I don't need a mom and pop. I'm 70. I want to be my own man. And anybody over 21 should also want to be your own person, your own man, your own woman. Be yourself. Our government has gone from serving us to us serving it. It should be completely transparent. Our tax dollars, we should be able to trace every dollar that we pay in taxes to some end product in the government. But no, we can't see into the government. They have a curtain, an iron black curtain, which we cannot see through, hear through, or know anything about. But our lives, it demands that we must open up our kimono to show the government that we are not the enemy it's protecting us from. Please, people, see this. Get angry. Get out in the streets. Say, I'm mad as hell. I'm not taking this anymore. Do something, please.
John, I agree with you on all counts. I am so glad you're running for president because I like the hellraiser of the world getting out there and telling the truth. And whenever you come on this show, you tell the truth. And the last time you were on here, I swear to God, when I'm in the streets, I get more comments about you than any other guests that I've had on. Even my mom emailed me saying how much she liked it. So I, I wish you continued luck. Um, everybody, please. Hey, you did change the name of your website. It was McAfee 2016. McAfee 2016.com. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fighting alone here. It feels like it. Everybody is afraid of our government. I feel like I'm fighting alone. Uh, and I'm fighting the two-party machine, the Democrats and the Republicans. And we see what that has led us to. Uh, we need help. Volunteers, if you can spare 50 cents to volunteer, go to McAfee2016.com. Press the volunteer button. Press the donate button. If you, only, if you can only donate 25 cents, do that. We need your help, people. We need your help. Well, you also yeah. have the website Be a Libertarian as well, I believe, because I was just on that today. Be a Libertarian. Donate. Um, I will continue fighting penniless and naked on the streets because I can't do anything else. I have children and I have grandchildren. And what else can I do? What else can I do? But if you have children and grandchildren out there, you, you can't give up your liberty and your freedom without giving up the freedom of your children. You don't have the right you don't have the right. I'm sorry. You have to fight for them. Well said, I'm John. Fighting for them. Well I'm said. fighting for them and for my own. And so please, go to McAfee2016.com. Help out in any way you can. Mr. Thank McAfee, you very much. Thank, thank, you. All right. thank you for coming on. And uh, man, when you come to LA, promise me you're going to come into the studio and sit down face to face with us. I will, I promise. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Parker. This has been a quick in and out because John only had so much time to spend with us today. But this Panama Papers, yes, it's important, but it may be important in a completely different way than you're even thinking about it. So just remember to be optimistic, remain vigilant, think critically. My name is Michael Parker. This is Antidote. Until next week, we are the Antidote.